There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Hi guys, I'm Gravy here, and this is a DC Legends video. In this video, I'm having to do this a little bit backwards, so forgive me if I'm kind of like off right now, but my OBS isn't working, and if you guys know what that is, there's a hardware acceleration issue with the browser and the camera and all this other stuff, and I don't have much time to do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get to it, and I'm trying to do it a different way, so if it comes off a bit wonky, please forgive. Now, also, it is my son's birthday. Actually, his birthday was yesterday, but you know how it is, busy working on other stuff. I didn't get a chance to actually make this video, so happy birthday to my little man. The whole reason I missed with son, the whole reason I found the meaning to live, it was him. So before I get emotional about it, my firstborn son, my only born son, I don't have any other sons. I have a daughter, love her too. But uh, yeah, my son's my superhero, legitimately. Uh, he saved my life. So in any case, now we'll get on to this month's review. Um, so I'm kind of excited about what's happening. Uh, they've added a lot of future slate characters. Um, part of me was a bit, how do I put it? Like trepidatious. Like I was wondering like, why are they introducing these future state characters when there's so many other characters they don't have? However, I do like the fact that a lot of these future state characters are diverse in terms of ethnicity and origin and the story isn't always the same supposedly so you have a future state wonder woman and i i like where it comes from in fact let me just go ahead and get into it because these are characters that i do not know do not really just like with jace fox i do not know but once i found out about him i was like oh i'm interested so i'm kind of interested where the reworks are going like this month seems like it's going to be at minimum things are going to be shaking up put it that way um i'm a bit flustered uh, and to be frank, it's because I mentioned my son and all that superhero stuff. And so now I'm kind of like, you know, flustered about it because it takes you back to a moment and you're like, yeah. And now he's 14 and it's like, oh, he doesn't even like his dad anymore. He likes me. He loves me. But you know how teenagers are. Friends are the most important. Anyway, I will go into this month's review. Deep breath. <sighs> here we go. So October is almost here. It is actually here. And I apologize for this being late. I've been sick. I'm doing a double down, a double uh, upload day today. Um, so that'll kind of make up for me being sick and having to work all this time. And then Andy, you can probably still hear it in me right now. I am not doing well, but let's go ahead and push through. So October is already here with Yara Floor, Future State Wonder Woman, and Nubia uh, Vengeful Amaze, uh, Amazon. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I like this Future State stuff is because they're not making them within the same universe as I am to understand it. Uh, so that means that Bruce Wayne and Diana Prince can live on as Wonder Woman and Batman and however many reboots they want to do. But they're also introducing characters that could be their own Wonder Woman and Batman, Jace Fox and Yara Floor. Um, so they're not really interfering with the legacy of those who were before them, but kind of enhancing or continuing the legacy as it moves forward. So I do I do like that. I do like that a lot. Reworked Aquaman King of Atlantis, who was already the number one tune this month, I'm telling you. And Dr. Poison, Master of Toxic, Master of the Toxic, are now live in game. And actually, special shout out to someone who might be watching, who is a co-worker, who was very determined to find this channel. I'm not sure if this co-worker is actually watching this video, but shout out to you if you are. I doubt that you are. Anyway, so, Nubia. Bench for Amazon is the login hero for October. Uh, I've done a quick read-through of these already, and I've already taken my Aquaman 7011. I did it like yesterday. As soon as our raid rewards dropped, I spent about 6,000 gems taking him 7011. So, uh, and getting like as many blue rings as I could into it that I felt comfortable with. So, just a heads up, this isn't like my initial, like I don't really remember Nubia or um, Yara's like kits and I don't remember Dr. Poison's. I know Aquaman's because I've been using him and I think he's a beast already. So Nubia is an Amazon who broke free from Ares control and fights alongside her sister to destroy the god that once took her freedom. Straight up, just so you guys know, I am not familiar with the Wonder Woman like universe like I would be with like say Batman. Like Batman was my focus in DC um superman 
look a lot less so, but more so than Wonder Woman, if I'm being like just straight up real about it. I've always liked Wonder Woman. I liked her. She was my third favorite of the Justice League. Like Aquaman was always just so boring to me. And <laughs> uh, Martian Manhunter had no real interest in him. So like Flash, I mean, speed is always the answer. So it just wasn't really a thing. Um, but yeah, I would say like Wonder Woman and Flash for me were like that next tier of like heroes that I like, but I didn't really pay attention to them. So if they just tossed out a whole new villain for Flash, I'd be like, I didn't know he existed. And everybody would be like, yeah, he's been around since the 50s. So heads up, I did not know that Nubia uh, was, because uh, from what this description says, she's a part of the current Wonder Woman universe, not the future state. So just uh, just like being real. Uh, Ares Smite, damage and gain three crit chance ups, legendary if the target is enraged, Nubia gains and power strength ups, that makes it if the target is enraged, so that's not necessarily a plus against Harley Quinn, it's a plus alongside Harley Quinn, so you can enrage your targets, it's also a plus against Atrocitus who isn't really played anymore, um, okay, so that's that, um, Athena's Wisdom, damage and 70% chance to apply stun to a single target, Legend legendary apply enrage times two on the target. So she does apply enrage. Enrage is one of those like, it's okay to have, it's, it's good if you can do it to the enemy team just so you can kind of control what they're going to do kind of like, it's, it is silence basically except they don't actually get to decide when it goes off, they just do their A1 anyway. but. I mean, if they're in rage, I mean, the only thing I really see a benefit for in rage is like, it's kind of like silence. So I'm not, I'm not big into the rage buff. I like the, the stun on that more so than the rage. Artemis haste, damage to, uh, damage and 75% chance to apply in rage to all enemies. Uh, legendary 50% chance to apply three strength ups to each ally, on each ally. So... 50% chance per ally, which means like chances are you're going to have at least two that end up with three strength ups. Uh, the enraged to all enemies. I think enraged like silent. Um, it's good if it's on everybody because then you kind of like just dismiss one of their entire turns. So that's a plus, but I'm not really seeing, I don't know. It's, I guess it's something different, but I'm not really like, this isn't really like stunning me or making me really hype. Um, vengeance, apply empowered strength ups. Although the empowered strength ups, now now that I think about it, or that I'm just saying it out loud, King Shark becomes so much more lethal when he starts ramping up with those empowered strength ups to where he's just one shotting anything that's in his way. So if her empowered strength ups are heavily based on the target being enraged, then that enrage is a massive plus and a good thing that you can apply it to all enemies, knowing that 75% chance to apply to all enemies means that it's either going to apply to all of them or none of them as opposed to the legendary point which will give the strength ups to has a 50 percent chance for each i know that sounds like weird like um minutia but it's the same thing that they do with eclipso and harley quinn so like harley quinn i don't remember the exact percentage but let's say it's 50 percent chance harley quinn has 50 percent chance to enrage all enemies and eclipso has a 50 percent chance to enrage each enemy meaning that when Eclipso goes off with his A3, I think it is, or A2, that means that if each one has a 50% chance, so like one of them may end up enraged, or all of them, or three of them, two or whatever. Whereas with Harley Quinn, it's an all or nothing bet. So with Artemis Haste for Nubia, 75% chance that it's all or nothing, but for the strength ups, it's a 50% chance per. So, I mean, it's something. Empower strength ups to a random enemy or a random ally, <laughs> random enemy, that was, uh, hey, you could give your your out your enemies empowered strength ups. Mm, screw yourself over. To my girlfriend is trying to like walk silently and, and attack the chocolate with her coffee. So just calling her out. What she's, what's really happening is that she's jealous that Olympia is sitting on my lap. So anyway, apply a power strength up to a random ally when Nubia is hit. Mm, okay. If Nubia has strength up, 50% chance to gain awareness. Now I'm assuming that this is strength up or empowered strength up. Like that's one thing that isn't really clear with me. Like with Power Girl, for example, she has five power, if she has five strength ups, 
then she has a chance to gain death immunity. And I never really got a conclusive answer as to whether or not strength up is just a strength up, whether it's empowered or not, or if they mean like it has to be strength ups and if it's empowered strength ups, it doesn't count. So I guess here we'll figure out for her uh, relatively quickly within her kit, if she just has a straight up strength up, if she'll get a 50%, uh, if there's a, if she'll get an awareness off that. Anyway, uh, expertise and now Olympia's moving. There she is, say hey, 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 hey. All right, go ahead. Uh, expertise, gain a empower, a permanent empower strength up or a permanent stamina up. Yeah. I want the permanent empower strength up. That's very superwoman, but I mean, let's have two superwomen go in beast mode and raid. That would be nice. Um, at the end of Nubia's turn, I don't know why there's that asterisk thingy there. Um, legendary also gain true sight. So she'll gain an empowered strength up and true sight at the end of her turn. It'd be nice if she got that true sight at the beginning of her turn. Hell, it'd be nice if she got the empowered strength, uh, stamina up at the beginning of her turn, but that doesn't really matter. Well, it kind of does matter if she's retaliated against that empowered strength up or stamina up, sorry. That empowered stamina up would help her survivability. Also gain true sight. If she got that at the beginning of her turn, it'd be so much better. Then she could target whoever. And she and Nubia is what? She's physical affinity. So yeah. Alright, okay, alright. I mean it'd be a good like one shot queen against Black Flash if he's hiding behind a taunter. Same with Spectre. If she had like the empowered strength up and then would gain true sight at the beginning of each of her turns. Mm. But she gains true sight at the end of her turn, which means she'll basically have true sight all the time. So maybe I'm just picking a few nits right here. Like, you know, on that first turn when she goes, she won't have true sight. But then from the for the rest of the game on, she'll have true sight. And she'll be gaining empowered strength ups, which makes her good for like PvE content. So for those of you who have her as a free login, I would say if you're early to mid game, still working through campaign, stuff like that. The empower strength that will help her with survivability. The enrage will, I mean, just make them all only use their A1s, but at the same time, she'll be gaining empowered strength ups. So she might be an early to mid game PVE beast. As far as it goes, like PVP, I don't think so. Not so much, just because it looks like she needs just like a little bit of time to ramp up. So she might be good in certain situations, but if she's not able to ramp really, then I don't see much benefit. All right, let's 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 keep it moving. Let's keep it moving since I'm over here, like just rambling and rambling. All right, so Yara Floor, future state Wonder Woman. Yara Floor is a demigod from the Amazon rainforest uh, in Brazil. She took the title of Wonder Woman to bring peace to the gods. Now, a lot of us would be like, yeah, that's where the Amazons were supposed to be from. But seeing as how it came out in the 40s and the 50s and it got a bit whitewashed, not, not, I mean, that's the way the world was back then. Just saying. Um, yeah, it's nice to see a Brazilian in there. So shout out to my Brazilians. Come uh, by. Lasso strike. Uh, damage to a single enemy. Ignore shields if the target has silence. Legendary, apply silence on the target and ignore awareness if the target already silenced. So if they're already silenced, you give them silence again and then you ignore their awareness. Now silence, I'm not a big fan of, the, of that buff. However, if you're keeping it on one in particular the entire time, let's say, and I keep saying Black Flash, but I don't think Black Flash is going to be the beast that he used to be coming up shortly. I'll, I'll explain why. But having silence on once is good having it on for on one tune for the entirety of a match could be pretty freaking awesome um yeah i like that and then to ignore the awareness i'm always a fan of ignoring awareness unless you're ignoring my awareness you know respect my awareness you can ignore others awareness but you'll respect mine um spirit control reset enemy turn meter <sighs> um and apply silence that ignores immunities on the target. Legendary Yara Flora gains. 
maybe I did not read this well enough. Maybe I, I think I didn't read this well enough because I feel like I just read Aquaman's, like read them all, then read Aquaman's like beast and forgot everybody else's. But reset enemy turn meter on the A2. That sounds, uh, and apply silence. So let's say I'm going up against a specter. I reset his turn meter and I apply silence. So he's only using his A1, which his A1 is a monster anyway. Um, he can't ignore this silence. And I like this mechanic that they added. They added it to um, someone else previously, like recently, where they're ignoring immunities. Not everyone should have it, but that that debuff immunity has gone has gotten real strong in the game. And so being able to ignore immunities is fun. But ignoring it for silence, eh. However, if you're ignoring it for silence and then you go to the A2, you're keeping the silence on them if that debuff immunity is already removed because the A1 does not ignore immunities. This all depends, but it, okay, this all depends. But it will ignore awareness. So I can use the A2 to put silence on, ignoring the immunities. And even if I'm not gonna be able to apply silence on the target by the time I get back around to my A1, I'm still gonna be able to ignore their awareness if it's an issue. All right, so Amazonian Wrath. Heavy damage to all enemies. If an enemy dies, you are against four stamina ups. Man, these Amazon love their stamina ups. Like, what's up? Legendary. Uh, also, Yara Floor gains two permanent stamina ups. So, okay. So this is going to help with that survivability thing again. Um, two is significant. It's not like huge, but it's, it's good. It's decent. Demigod Stance. Every time an enemy is silenced, Yara gains stun immunity. Eh? Um, also apply 20% shield to all allies. Ooh. So every time an enemy is silenced... Every time an any every time an enemy is silenced, Yara will gain stun immunity, which I don't care about. But she'll also apply twenty percent shield to an ally, so that'll make a silence team. Like if you build a silence team up, you put her with like Superwoman, where Deathstroke applies it, and then at lead. Give me a second, I'll think of one. But I mean, that's helping the entire team with survivability, giving everybody. 20% shield and if everybody on the team stuff. I also wondered is this pro well again passive can't proc passive supposedly but this would be awesome if it was also those passive silences as well where if you hit the enemy then you gain silence and I think I think Clayface does that. One of the taunters does that. I cannot remember who was it please? No it wasn't please. Somebody does that as a passive ability as well. So I need to look that up again. I apologize for not having it off the top of my head. Um, Heart of the Amazon, at the start of every Yara turn, uh, purge three debuffs on her, legendary. What is up with the women in the purging of three debuffs? Like, ladies, is this, is this, who was the girl who sang Shake It Off? Is this, is this one of those like, Ladies get all the purging three debuffs. Your Cassandra Canes, your Doves, your Yaras get to shake it off. Like, seriously, though? And I'm not thinking it was that Taylor Swift. I'm thinking of Mariah Carey. All right, so also gain three strength ups. Uh, that's the legendary ability. At the start of every Yara turn, she'll gain three strength ups and purge three debuffs. Okay. I mean... Going over it, it seems like she'll she's they're trying to make a mix of like a support slash damage dealer. As I look back through it, it is apply silence. But she's also kind of she's kind of debuffing, but not debuffing. Does that make sense? Like the silence when it's gone when it's out that much, when you're doing that much silence, just like it was with um just like it was it was with other no, 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 this wasn't it. This wasn't it at all. Apologies. Like I'm getting confused, but like all the silence that she would lay down makes her kind of a deep buffer. It's, it really does hamper the enemy team because they're only allowed to use their A1s. So it can be useful. So it's a very useful buff, debuff the way that it is integrated into her kit. If you're using building a whole silence team, then she'll also gain from those other silences that they're putting down. So every time some enemy is silenced, then the entire team is actually going to get shield. So 
That helps with everybody's survivability. She's giving herself permanent stamina ups. So as long as those aren't purged in any way, then she's going to become harder to kill the longer the match or the battle goes on. Three strength ups. I mean, that's nothing to write home about, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. Would have loved to have seen those being power strength ups, but that probably would have made her a bit OP. I mean, these two, Nubia and Yara, I mean, I can see them being good. I see, I definitely see Nubia being great for PvE early mid game. Yara, because I'm not big into using silence, I don't think she's going to be that great. However, the idea that her A2 does ignore immunities kind of run, kind of opens up some possibilities as to the approach of how to attack some of those debuff teams with your Terras and your Green Lantern now Jordans. I don't know, at minimum, interesting. I'm not gonna, they're not groundbreaking, they're not changing the game, but they'll be good, I think. I think they'll be decent. You'll see them pop up every once in a while in game PvP uh, with some special comps. I think, it, I think it could be good. I think it could be legit good. All right, anyway, on to Dr. Poison, Master of the Toxic. Now, I took Dr. Poison 7011 a long time ago because she was on the only red that could heal and she was special damage. So like it, she was kind of a, a rare bird in that sense. And now you only have, what, like three special damage physicals, this Joker, Artemis, and Dr. Poison, I think. I don't think you have any more than that. Um, so that's nice. Um, you want her to work with intelligence ups. Uh, thanks to the exception with Toxic and Nauseous, and nauseous. Nox, noxious, noxious, the toxic and noxious. I've never seen that word written out and I'm not even sure, noxious. I had to like not look at it to pronounce it correctly. I don't think I've ever seen that word. Um, in terms of like, I, I think I've heard it. I don't think I've ever read it before. Wow. Anyway, the mysterious Maru earns her nickname as Dr. Poison. Uh, virulence, special damage and apply three bleeds that ignore immunities to an enemy. I'm, I'm loving the fact that they're bringing back bleeds and disease by having the debuffs ignore debuff immunity. Like, it's awesome. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love it. If tar that's bringing back like a lot of the things that I like. Now it's still gonna be a problem for like my out my Raz Al Ghouls, who I really want to have a big part in this game. But anyway, if Target already has bleed, apply one bleed, three turns to a random enemy. Uh, legendary double damage if Target is bleeding. All right, good bet. Um, that just depends on how much damage she deals. And I gotta start doing some more work on the stats to figure out like damage and where I can place these people. Anyway, anti-venom, overheal all allies. Uh, additional 2% true heal per bleed on enemy team, max 20%. So you get 20% true heal plus overheal, then purge three debuffs from all allies. Well, she's at least she's generous with purging her debuffs. She purges three from everybody. Then again, it's not a passive ability, so yeah. Uh, they should purchase three debuffs from all allies. Okay, that's that's a bet. Um, gas grenade, 10% true damage to all enemies and apply three bleeds, additional 15, additional light damage. I don't know why that 15 is there. Additional light damage, light special damage to enemy team per bleed on enemy team. Additional light special damage to enemy team per bleed on enemy team. Can't miss. Legendary apply two heal immunities to random enemies. Now this thing here, additional light special damage to enemy team per bleed on team makes bleed behave like disease. But it says light special damage. So that just depends on what it looks like once you actually get there. Like it really just depends on how much damage she does. If it's light special damage, it's not actually what bleeds equal out to be. It's just you get more damage based on it. But I mean, that makes it really seem like it behaves like disease. Anyway, Master of Poisons. At the end of her turn, 75% chance for all enemies to take 1% true damage per bleed on team, max 25%. That is a lot. And then the bleeds on her A1 ignore immunities. Yo. So if you run her with like a dark side or something where she's doing that A1 potentially two times, dead man in there so that she's potentially doing the A1 two times, like, oh, even Saint Walker. Like she looks like she could be a problem. I'm not saying, she, again, she's not changing things, but she could be a legit problem if she's doing 
75% chance for all enemies to take 1% true. So that could be up to, like, I mean, that would have to be a lot of bleeds you're laying down. Like, a lot of bleeds. But 25% true damage to the entire enemy team? That hurts. Um, at the end of her turn. Okay. So also purge one buff from each enemy. Boop. Um, master of Antidotes at the beginning of her turn, 71% chance. 71 is just an odd one. 71% chance to apply overheal. I don't know what 50 is. I guess 50 means medium overheal um, to all allies. At the beginning of her turn, 71% 5, chance to apply an overheal to all allies. That's big. Depends on how much the overheal is, but that's big. Um, if there are six plus bleeds on the enemy team, double amount healed, which is also huge. Yo, she might she might be legit. She might be legit. I still haven't assigned her legendary points yet. I, like I said, I have her 7011, but I haven't assigned the legendary points. I mean, I'm leaning towards doing that A5 first, and then the A2, and then the A1, depending on how much damage she does. I don't know. She might be legit. She may be legit. So now we come down to the Aquaman. So, um, raised on land, Arthur Curry discovered his true identity as the lost king of Atlantis, an aquatic civilization that rules the seven seas. I gotta be honest, I always thought Aquaman was lame. Going into his history a little bit more, he's not as lame as I thought he would be. But, like, his, the betrayal from him, especially from, like, the super friends and stuff, Yes, I'm old enough to have watched the Super Friends at a young age. Now, I wasn't that age when the Super Friends came out. But when I was that age, I mean, it still wasn't a show that was that old. So that's how old I am. Anyway, um, Might of the Ocean. Damage to an enemy. Gain three men's uh, legendary point. Plus 50% turn meter of Aquaman is mending, which he is always mending. Uh, I am your king. Yes, he is. <laughs> Apply crit immunity. 40% turn meter up to an in, in two team. Uh, Apply three death immunities on self if mending. Legendary use might of the ocean afterward if mending. So he's going to use his A1 after his A2 if he's mending, which he is going to be. Um, Trident of Poseidon. Heavy damage to an enemy. Apply four bleeds. Uh, for three turns and stun. I mean, see the, the the sea creatures or whatever. They loved their bleeds, like Black Manta, Siren, King Shark. They love to make y'all bleed um, and stun. Uh, legendary also Aquaman gains two strength ups. Sure, why not? Um, Maelstrom. If Aquaman is affected by turning me to use, I am King. I am your King. Uh, which would then mean crit immunity and 40% turn meter to the team, which is awesome. Then legendary point, 30% turn meter down on the enemy. This is why the meta is going to change. It probably already has. I'm seeing a lot less Black Flash teams. Spectre's still running around, but I haven't done my power rankings. I probably won't even make the power rankings till next week. But, I mean, usually I try to wait a month before like allowing the reworks and the new tunes to come change things in the power rankings that I do. But I mean, if you think about this, if you use Black Flash against me, and I'm just realizing something that I did not realize in the beginning, he doesn't even have to be at team lead. This is a passive ability. This is not his lead ability. Yo, um, because I've been running him at lead. I'm about to check this out right now on my phone. I can't even wait. I'm sorry. Like, I got to I gotta boot up DC Legends real quick. Because now... I, mm, so, you, you touch me with your Black Flash. You hit me with that A3. Not only am I giving my team 40% turn meter up, I'm giving your whole team 30% turn meter down. And that's not even like a... 70% chance, 50%. No, no. Touch me with some, some of that manipulation and your team loses 30% and I gain 40. 70% gap. Like, yo, I'm checking this right now. I got to. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't even realize this was that, was was all that. Like, yo. And he's what? He's, he's regular physical damage. I was about to say, because if he was 
special damage, I'd be running him with Lex if he could own this. Um, if I, yeah, that's just his passive ability. His King of Atlantis is his leadership ability, which is King of Atlantis. While Aquaman is alive, all enemies are immune to crit damage, which I've seen at work. Is it does a lot more than you think it would. Also, 75% chance for Aquaman to start combat with three men. Legendary. Also, Aquaman gains two additional men at the start of combat. So at the very beginning, he's going to have two men, regardless of what you do with the A with the A5P2. Um, which means that his rest of his kit that that is reliant on men's, which it would be the use of the mighty ocean after his A2. And then on his A2, gaining that 50% turn meter, that's all opened up now from the beginning. However, Maelstrom might be the most um, important ability to the PvP meta that we've seen since Chase by Death because you cannot use Black Flash if you see Aquaman on a team. Not if he's lead, and I thought it had to be that he was lead. This leadership ability, albeit nice, I don't give a damn about. Like, granted, those 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 men's do open up the rest of his kit. Fair. However, on his A two, um, wait, hold on. Where am I? I'm not getting men's. In, no, I gain men's on his A one. Fine. Um, I don't gain men's on the A3. So I only gain men's on the A1 if I'm not running him at lead. At lead, I'm gonna be getting men's um, at the start of battle, and then I can kind of keep the men's going with his A1. However, all I really need from him is his A is his P1 A4. Like, yo, really though? I didn't realize that wasn't lead. I could put him anywhere with any lead and that'd be fine. And you guys underestimate how many other tunes like manip uh, manipulate turn meter, like try to affect your turn meter down. Kaga, King Shark, I was saying this before, and I don't know if it was this video or the one I recorded before this. Kaga, King Shark, um, Black Flash, of course. I wonder about Red Hood, his manipulation of turn meter down as a passive based on his A5. I wonder about that. Cersei, like, there's a lot of turn meter down manipulation. And if he's just on the team, it makes it a, not just a bad idea, like a disgustingly bad idea. So that advantage that you gain is a race and then some. Like, oh, beast, beast. He, I am your king. Like, yo. All right, PvP, Donna Troy. Get those frags, clear those boards, make sure you clear those boards, especially if you're early to mid game. Donna Troy is an amazing taunter, amazing support for your team. She's incredible. Aquaman King of Atlantis. I might actually do the Aquaman video now and release it on Friday. I was thinking about doing it Monday, but I might have got, might as well go ahead and do it now. Uh, yeah, I'm still stunned on that. I cannot believe that's not a leadership ability. Like I can't wrap my head around that. That's huge. Like that's the end of Black Flash, period. Like, I mean, he'll be around. And you'll have other comps, but I think this is gonna be this is gonna lead to like one of the more diverse PvP metas that we've seen in a while. Because now if he's on the team, you can't manipulate turn meter, so you're gonna have to find some other way to take care of business. Whoever however and who with whoever that may be, like in this thing, I'm sorry to go back to it, but I got to. Like in this thing, it doesn't show that he has any real weaknesses, although at the same time it doesn't show that he has like some kind of OP strength. Like he looks like he's good if you're just going by damage and things like that. However, that one passive ability makes him key to kicking Black Flash about the paint. Like he's he's all the way out. You'll be able to use him in certain situations, but this is gonna diversify what you have to do with your roster, facing other teams, if you see that Aquaman or if you don't. And then when you see this team with like no black flash and whoever else you had to put in to deal with it. It's just, it's just gonna diversify the PvP meta. It's like, oh, it's awesome. I think it's incredible. Um, for October, we have two showdowns, both rewarding Hippolyta, Hippolyta, um, Queen of the Amazons. Board clear for these tournaments is Cheetah, Avatar of the Hunt. Now, Cheetah's a farmable tune. However, I think she's well worth taking RB1 just because of positive turn meter manipulation. Um, so I would say definitely a plus. Hippolyta is an amazing, uh, Hippolyta 
is an amazing support tune, especially when it comes to raids. So definitely go for those two events. I think they're great. Not just like have the frags in case, but they're like legitimate tunes that you should build now. Um, Hero Blitz, Mystical Blitz, Buddha Buddha. Um, bonus tunes for Siege, Yara, Floor, and Nubia. Again, I don't know how groundbreaking those two are, so I'm not so sure how much I'm going to level either one of them up. I see you down there. I see you. Um, Aquaman, I already have 7011. Dr. Poison, 7011. Captain Boomerang, I have no incentive. What's wrong with you? Huh? Why are you giving me those big eyes? What's up? Uh, Captain Boomerang, I have no incentive to take him 7011. You need some attention now. Is that it? You need attention. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. Can you tell that she might be a little spoiled? Okay. Ah, oh, your body up. You have to go pee pee. You gotta go pee pee. Or you just need some attention. Your breath stinks. Your oh, your breath is on one. Oh my god. Your breath stinks. All right. So in any case, I, why are you nibbling my ear? Why are you nibbling my ear? You're getting more intimate with me than my lady. Nibbling my ear like that. All right, so Dr. Poison, Master of the Toxic. I already have 7011. Captain Boomerang, I am not inclined to boost him up uh, for this event, and I'm not gonna. Dead Man, I already have 7011. Pretty good tune, like solid. Star Sapphire, farmable, awesome tune. Get those frags. So I'll have like four of the bonus tunes, and I am like looking forward to getting Yara, but she's not a tune that I'm go gonna go broke for. I don't think she, I don't know how great she's gonna be. You have the two Nubia events, obviously. The six day event is two phase. <sighs> Why couldn't that have been Riddler? Although apparently two phase hits like a beast. Um, and then we have Beast Boy. Ah ah ah, the change. Like who needs a rework, honestly? And speaking of which, yo, know, you are really not gonna let me do this right now, are you? Um, and then Aries Team Challenge. Hey, give me a minute. Aries, ah, Aries Team Challenge. I hope you guys find this entertaining and I hope it's not too distracting. Aries Team Challenge. Uh, Aries is, I have plenty of his prizes. I never really did anything with him. Uh, so there's that. Yeah, Raid Boss already went through. I thought this skin was awesome and I didn't realize until like day three that I actually wanted this skin. But um, yeah, I didn't make it. And then I was not, I like this skin as well, but I definitely wasn't about to spend 10 bucks on it. So I think those are two awesome skins, but I wasn't gonna spend any money on them. Um, so yeah, that's that. And also there's this other thing that they have going on right now. Can I go back? Given how I've recorded all this stuff. Um, they have time to vote November reworks. Captain Adam Raven, Talia Al Ghul, Arsenal, Penguin, Nightwing, Ocean Master, uh, Captain Boomerang. How is Captain Boomerang on the list to be voted on, but then you make him a siege bonus tune? So you're telling us you know he's crap and you're making it more difficult. You're making him a bonus tune in siege. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we know he's garbage, but use him in siege. Anyway, uh, Supergirl and then Vandal Savage. Um, from just like a who I want to play with because they're my favorite characters in like the in the DC universe, I would lean towards Nightwing. I, I never liked Penguin. Penguin was always a punk to me. Like anyway, um, I want to say another word, but I don't really want to say that on YouTube. But yeah, Penguin, yeah, I wasn't with it. So he could not be in the game for all I get a damn. Uh, and Supergirl. I mean, soup, yeah, I would want to have like Supergirl and Nightwing. But uh, who I think should, just from like a standpoint of how crappy their kits are, based on who's like really, really crappy and needs it, I would say probably, well, hell, it might still be Nightwing. Ocean Master has his places. Captain Boomerang, I haven't done anything with him. Vandal Savage was straight booty. So I'm gonna lean towards Vandal Savage since he was so trash, and Captain Adam, since I'm partial to him because my daughter really likes his skin. So those are the two I would vote for. Oh no, Nightwing is also kind of trash. Oy. I mean, Talia isn't that bad, but she damn sure ain't good. Arsenal is not that bad, but he's damn sure not good. I took him 7-Eleven recently, and he's not, he's not as bad as, as you would think. Penguin is 
is garbage, but so is his character, so I'm fine with that. Um, I'm gonna have to say Nightwing, but then they've had like three chances to rework Nightwing and screwed him up each time, but I'm gonna go with Nightwing, and then I guess Supergirl? Supergirl has her uses if she hit harder. Like, I like the fact that she's an AOE, an all AOE tune. Like, she doesn't have a single target ability. But, okay, Nightwing's definitely one. I'm sorry, this is taking longer than I thought it would. Um, like, there's no use for Captain Adam. Legit, no use. There's, I mean, there is a use for Supergirl, although it's niche. Um,. Vandal Savage, there's no use for him. Captain Boomerang. Apparently, they want you to use him as Siege. Um, God, so much garbage. Uh, I'm going to go with Nightwing and Supergirl. Based on... No, no, worst kit. Vandal Savage. All right. Like, the worst kits on this list right now are Captain Adam and Vandal Savage. So, I say those are the worst kits. The ones that I would want to see reworked just because I love them are Supergirl and Nightwing. Boom, there we go. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I drop DC Legends videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Marvel Future Revolutions videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So please like, please subscribe, and if you don't like it, hit subscribe and hit dislike. I'm okay with that as well. Sorry if I went a little bit long, but I guess I had a lot to say that was like rambling and blah, so hopefully it was like somewhat coherent. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. I got to take this one out to do her business and I'll see you next time. Hey, I, I.